Let me introduce a few friends. Rumo and Mini were born in 2014, a small mobile robot with a face and a humanoid that can laugh and cry, invite us to play, express happiness, fear, anger, excitement, and our favorite, frustration. Their minds are products of assistive robotics and telemedical robotic intelligence research created to help people with disabilities. They are particularly good friends with children with autism spectrum disorder or ASD. In ways that humans have managed, Romo and Mini and their humanoid relative, OP2, have pioneered unparalleled social emotional interactions with children with autism to assist in their development and track their progresses. I don't know what to do. One day, OP2 was shouting in front of a child, 12-year-old boy, in part of a control experiment in our lab at the George Washington University. His parents were sitting with me a few feet away. He's frustrated, the boy answered. That's frustration. The boy's parents were shocked. They had not known their son knew the word frustration, let alone that he would be able to identify the behavior that defined the feeling. It was a revelation. A robot could open a new channel of communication for the boy. That boy lives with autism, one precious member of the world's largest minority group, people with disabilities. One billion men, women, and children, largely misunderstood, misrepresented, and underserved. The very same humans who are characteristically compassionate, collaborative, and charitable. I learned that firsthand by working with them and building many. But it was years before I unlock this truth, a journey that started in South Korea. To live in a modern, high-tech society, we are expected to master a vast amount of knowledge in order to equip ourselves for a merciless world filled with competitions. It's a trajectory idealized around the globe. Strive to get a good education, to get a job, to be wealthy, and become famous. I was in there too. And while fighting my way through those kind of challenges, I sense myself becoming less human and more robotic. Ironically enough, I wanted to study robotics so I can make robots that work for humans, ease our lives, and enrich humanity. I realize now I was also trying to improve my own life by giving it meaning beyond my physical reach. I had secured a job in a big IT industry in Korea, but I wasn't satisfied. I was not seeing my contribution change the society in the ways I thought was possible. So quite uncharacteristically Korean of me, I quit. Koreans aren't quitters. Any Koreans out there might know what I'm talking about. You don't dishonor your parents, but I quit to honor my father. His parents, my grandparents, were killed in the Korean War, leaving my father and his four siblings to raise themselves. As the youngest in the family, my father went to Seoul alone to study the then emerging field of economic geography and became a professor to share his findings with curious minds. As a scholar, he devoted his whole life to the development plans of Korea. His example was one of moral courage, and his was the example I wanted to follow. So I left for America to pursue a PhD program at Georgia Tech where I could combine my technical expertise and my desire to affect individual lives. I joined the Operability Project, Accessible Robotic Programming for Students with Disability. But I did this not knowing what I know now about people with disabilities. Back then, I was one of the misguided majority who misunderstood one billion men. But I did know humanized intelligence and assistive technology. Systems, or robots in my case, that connect with people with special needs and augment with perception and functionality. For two years, I taught robotic programming for teenagers with visual impairments, while they taught me patience 
and perseverance. I learned more than they did. And I quickly discovered that there's no one-size-fits-all engineering solution for individuals with disabilities. What they needed were practical and personalized solutions based on their expressed preferences. My first experiment to test this was a telepresence robotic system. Interactive robotic technology, non-visual descriptions, designed to enable remote navigation, like a simulator for the blind or haptic Skype for the blind. I invited the visual impaired community and teens, adults, and even some seniors came from hours away to test my system. Not only they were excited to use my robots, they were effusive with their insightful suggestions. One participant was so moved by her experience that she wrote an essay and won the National Center for Women in Information Technology, NCWIT award. My ideas were getting attention, and I was getting confidence. The students, whose potential I was unleashing with our robots, were unlocking the robot in me. When I left the center, I poured all of my energy into programming Romo, Mini, and OP2 with my students and researchers with the same hearts and designed our robots to empower children with autism. Why autism? Because there are one in every 54 children in the US who have autism. Because there's no cure. Because geography and finances have become excuses for inequitable services. Because fewer than 20% of adults with autism are employed. And because diagnosed children are getting only 30 minutes of one-on-one -on -one special care per day or even per week, these children need more, deserve more, and robots can fill in the gaps. But to what extent, early diagnosis and thoughtful interventions have proven to curb symptoms of autism in children and give them a chance to outgrow it. Our robots can contribute to both lending their hands to human caregivers and to the children's families, giving them fresh hope. And here's how they do it. Robots like Romo and Mini can stay in the same play space with the children. As such, children do not feel judged or intimidated by the robot, but they treat them as their equal, a playmate. Romo and Mini, in turn, have the time to observe and analyze the child's activities model the behaviors the child needs improving, and report the effectiveness of the intervention back to clinicians and parents. This means that Romo and Mini are working double time. When in the play space, their observation becomes data, quantifiable and actionable data about children's activities from their movement power, speed, range of motion, facial expressions, eye gaze, vocal responses, and physical interactions. This information is onboarded as computational intelligence, prompting our robots to understand and empathize with the children and select appropriate actions to regulate and guide the child's emotional changes, reduce sensory overloads, and ultimately increase the effectiveness of the intervention. As playmates, our robots can invite the child into a joyful social environment with more natural play settings, so our robots do not dominate the space while providing social prompts and emotional stimuli. And over time, our robots can accumulate knowledge from the interaction with the, each child, being more ready and eager to learn from the child and grow together. And they have. In experiment after experiment, we watch children with autism speak their minds. Instead of ignoring human instructions, each child watched Minnie do somersaults and cart with, with him. When Minnie was lost a treasure, a child with sensory issues who hated getting his hands dirty dug his hands into a bowl of sand to find the treasure for Minnie. One child was so tech savvy and smart, he challenged Minnie to speak. You know, Minnie doesn't have a mouth. To follow his wild moves and to become smart the next time they met. Our seven years of study were providing overwhelming proofs that kids with autism spectrum disorder were responding as well as typically developing children during interactive sessions with our robots. And not just by reacting to the robot, but by self-initiating interactions. We were learning something new from each study. 
each day children and their parents inspired us and humbled us. Each child a testament to the fruits of perseverance, resilience, and collaboration. I drew upon these smiles when people challenged my motivations and questioned, why do you use color when the visual impaired can't see light? What is the financial or economic benefits of this research for real autism? Can your research attract big industry attention? And perhaps the most hurtful, why are you doing this research if you don't have autistic children of your own? The questions stung, but they were understandable. Of course, if you are from a society or cultural background where people with disability are kept hidden, it will be impossible to understand the need of these studies. Of course, a parent who sacrificed a career and relationship to care for the child would question how a man like me could truly understand and feel how much it hurts to be misunderstood. I couldn't pretend to feel that their reality, but I could see their potential. It was through finding potential in others that finally unlocked my own. Our recent progress with machine learning algorithms demonstrates that robotic interventions could be used as a preliminary evaluation for at-risk detection of autism. And results from our deep learning and artificial intelligence are enabling our robots to learn dance moves so they can teach the steps to children for more enriching social and educational experiences. Our robots are evolving quickly to learn the context of social interactions and human gestures, to better understand the child, and to be better prepared for a developing child who could very quickly outgrow and outsmart a robot. We have made tremendous progress. I have too. The billion people who I had misunderstood told me how to listen, how to trust, to believe. Not just in them, but in my own ability as their fellow human to empower them with our robotic system and robotic companions that could change their lives. But the journey is far from over. There's more to learn. Romo, Mini, and OP2 have just begun to bridge the gaps in our understanding of one another. But one humanoid alone can't alter the perception of the precious minority. But children can. Just like one child after another has changed me. Mini here doesn't see labels or doesn't say them. He plays through them. And so must we. Thank you very much.